Let's talk about centricolation manipulation. As this slide says, being able to manipulate into centricolation is where it all begins for me. It's the point that saves you. It's the life raft. It makes this work possible on these complex cases or really any case. Everything else, in my opinion, is secondary to centric relation and being able to manipulate into centric relation. Why is that true? Well, we see a lot of cases that have awful occlusions. Just the teeth are worn, they're missing teeth, the teeth have super erupted, big slides. The beginning point to me are Manipulation into centric relation. I'm going to show you how to do that this morning. We're going to start with PowerPoint, then I'm going to have a video of me manipulating a patient into centric relation. So the things I start with in a case that's got a terrible occlusion, missing teeth, uh, vertical dimension is off, incisal planes are messed up, clusal planes are messed up, there's no coordination. The starting points for me are centric relation, the posterior point, establishing correct vertical dimension. We've talked about that in three millimeters less than the humming point. If you measure from nose to chin, mm, the vertical dimension of occlusion is approximately three millimeters less than that. Incisal plane, length of the central in maxillary and mandibular central incisors, and the incisal plane blending seamlessly into the occlusal plane. I can reconstruct an entire case knowing those things. It'll end up perfectly if everything else is off. So we're going to talk today about centric relation manipulation. Centric relation is a specific point. It's a dot. It's the tip of a pencil. If you have several people that really know how to manipulate into centric relation, every one of them will manipulate into the same spot and the teeth contacting when the condyle is in centric relation will be exactly the same today, tomorrow, next week. It's a definitive dot point. It's not an area. So centric relation is a relationship of the mandible to the maxilla when the properly aligned condyle disc assemblies are in the most superior position against the eminentia, irrespective of tooth position or vertical dimension. What that means is centric relation has nothing to do with teeth contacting, nothing to do with occlusion. It's all about the joint. A simple way to think about it, it's when the condyle is seated maximally in the uppermost, midmost position. In other words, you have that condyle seated in the fossa as high as it'll go. It won't go any higher. It's solid. And that's the place that the mandible will rotate. It'll only rotate in centric relation. It'll only hinge in centric relation. So if you can hinge the mandible, you know you're in centric relation. Now centric occlusion is not the same thing as centric relation. Centric occlusion only has to do with the teeth contacting. Centric relation only has to do with the condyle, condylar head in the fossa. Centric occlusion only has to do with teeth in contact. The relationships of the mandible to the maxilla when the teeth are in maximum occlusal contact irrespective of the position or alignment of the condyle disc assembly. So centric occlusion is when your teeth are in the most stable contact. But it doesn't have anything to do with centric relation. So centric occlusion is also referred to as the acquired position of the mandible. Somebody's centric occlusion may be like this. That may, the, may be the most stable contact between the teeth, or like this. But it doesn't have anything to do with the condyle being seated maximally in the fossa. Our objective is to make centric relation and centric occlusion occur simultaneously. This is called centric relation occlusion. In other words, when the condyle is max, condylar head is maximally seated in the fossa and you touch the teeth together into centric occlusion, there should be no slide or it should be imperceptible. So when you manipulate the condyle into the fossa and then you touch the teeth together and have the patient squeeze, there should not be a perceptible slide. That's centric relation occlusion and that's where I restore my cases because it's stable. That's like having both legs the same length in a person that jogs. It's more stable. It puts the least amount of stress on the system. So this is centric relation. Only talking about the condyle disc assembly.
when the condylar head is seated maximally in the fossa. And remember, the condyle, condylar head is not round. It's oblong, like this. And here's the fossa. It's also like a hot dog, oblong. Got all these muscles of the face. Someone's a clincher and rocks her, and you have a centric relation, centric occlusion slide. It means the, the condyle slides out of the fossa every time the patient squeezes together. You're going to put a lot more stress on the muscles of closure and positioning. So the master muscle, this one right here, the superficial portion, uh, the anterior two connects to the anterior two-thirds of the zygomatic arch. It connects right here. The deep portion connects to the medial surface of the zygomatic arch in here. The lateral surface of the ramus co uh, coronoid process and the angle of the mandible, it also connects to that. And its purpose is to elevate the jaw and clenches the teeth. So very often, you'll have tender spot or trigger point or lactic acid buildup in a trigger point if you have a person that clenches their teeth and they have a centric relation, centric occlusion slide or a malocclusion. The lateral pterygoid, the superior head, uh, connects to the infratemporal surface of the sphenoid greater wing right here. So here's the medial pterygoid and this is the lateral pterygoid. The inferior head, this one, connects to the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate. Here, the anterior portion and the anterior portion of the condylar neck and TMJ surface, it connects to the anterior part of the condylar head and the disc. The, and it causes protrusion of the mandible plus uh, it pulls the articular disc forward and assists rotary movements of the mandible and also guides the disc back when the person is closing. So remember, your fingertips, when you're manipulating in the centric relation, represent the master muscle, the medial pterygoid and the temporalis muscles, the muscles of closure, that's my fingertip. The thumbs represent the digastric muscles, they're pushing down. So the, this is the sequence of manipulating a person into centric relation. And I'm going to go through the PowerPoint, then I'm going to show you a video of me actually performing centric relation manipulation on a patient. So the first thing you do is you raise the patient's chin like this. You don't want the chin down. You want to raise the patient's chin so they're on the back of the head with their chin up. The patient's head is braced against your stomach or you may want to put a pillow or a, uh, you know some kind of cardboard plate between the patient's head and your stomach if you don't want their hair or head touching your stomach. But you, it's important that their head is braced against your stomach in some fashion. Then you place only your fingertips touching the inferior board of the mandible with little finger just anterior to the angle of the mandible. And you don't want the fingertips on the soft tissue of the neck. You want it on the bone of the inferior board of the mandible. And only put the fingertips on the bone of the inferior port of the mandible and you'd want just the fingertips. Pull the patient's mandible towards your stomach with your fingertips with the teeth in maximum intercuspation. In other words, pull the mandible upward so that the teeth come together in maximum intercuspation with only the fingertips. This won't make sense right now, but it will in just a moment. So don't put your thumbs on the chin, just pull the patient's mandible upward so that the teeth come together in maximum intercuspation. Then add the thumbs. Place your thumbs on the patient's chin, forming a C. So I've got my fingertips on the inferior border of the mandible, the bone, not the soft tissue of the neck. I've got my thumbs with the fingernails almost touching on the chin, and see how this makes a C right here. Get your wrist up like this, and you're just holding it right there, so now the teeth are contacting maximally and you've got your fingertips on the inferior board of the mandible and your thumbs together on the chin forming a C but you're not moving you're just holding it. Then ask the patient to gently open their mouth while you continue to firmly seat the patient's condyle in the fossa. Now at this point when you're holding the patient's teeth together the condyle may not be seated. If they have a centric relation to centric occlusion slide they're in centric occlusion right here. The condyle is not condyle and fossa are not in centric relation but they're going to be very close so when you ask the patient to open gently that condylar head is going to slide 
right into the fossa, right into centric relation. Keep your wrists and elbows locked, your elbows in close to your sides, and hinge your arms from your shoulders. So you want your elbows in, your wrist up, and your hands like this, like you're using a putter. You know, when you put the ball, you don't break your wrist, you hold it and keep the wrist locked. Same thing here, lock your wrist, keep your elbows in, your armpits in, your wrist up, and just hold that beginning position with the fingers on the inferior board of the mandible, the thumbs on the chin, and the C right here. So I'm not supplying the momentum for the patient to open they're supplying it. Ask the patient to move their mandible open or closed very slowly. Do not open the mouth wide or rapidly hinge the mandible. Now remember, the mandible hinges in the first 10 millimeters of open, then it translates. The only place the mandible will hinge is when the condyles are in centric relation, bone brace. That's the only place they'll hinge. If the condyle is out of the fossa, it won't hinge because it's on the eminence. It's not in a stable position. You don't want the patient to open real wide, and you certainly don't want to make them open wide or they'll splint. They'll splint the muscles, and you won't be able to manipulate into centric relation. So only about 10 millimeters maximum of opening, and let the patient open to 10 and then you'll be able to hinge. Sustain firm pressure on the inferior border of the mandible with your fingertips in line with the master muscle. Sustain only enough pressure with your thumbs to disclude the teeth. This pressure should be applied toward the patient's toes like this. So you're just holding them in the fossa, and they're supplying a lot of the momentum. Gently and slowly hinge the patient's mandible at five to 10 millimeters of opening. You'll be shocked when you do this the very first time. If you follow these directions, you will be a successful manipulator into centric relation on your very first patient, even if they're a person that uh, clenches and bruxes and has real tight master medial pterygoid temporalis muscles. Remember, if you open the mandible very wide, it will translate and cannot hinge. Can you picture that? The condyle is hinging in the first 10 millimeters in the fossa. Once you go past 10, it translates down the eminentia and it won't hinge anymore. So keep it to 10, about 10 millimeters. This is how you take a centric relation uh, registration record at a slightly open bite. You place the compound between the anterior teeth, manipulate the patient into centric relation, have them touch the compound, the teeth are not contacting. Place bite registration record, this is blue boost, facet, polyvinyl siloxane. Now remember, the teeth are not contacting, only the lower anterior teeth are contacting that compound in centric relation, and then you blow air on the, this compound and make it set up, and that centric relation at an open vertical. So if you're making, fabricating a night guard and clues orthotic appliance, this is how you do it. Now let's go to a video of me manipulating a patient into centric relation. So I'm going to manipulate this patient into centric relation. First thing I'm going to do is raise her chin. You want the chin up. You, you don't want the chin down like this. You want it as high as you can get it. Then I'm going to place my fingertips on the inferior board of the mandible. Now notice the fingertips are on the bone, not the soft tissue of the neck. If you put it on the soft tissue of the neck, that will hurt and they won't cooperate. They'll be only thinking about the pain of your fingers pushing into their neck. So get the fingers up like this, not flat like this, up like a ballerina on her toes with those fingertips touching the inferior board of the mandible. That's not a painful thing to the patient. Now notice my thumbs are not on the chin yet. Before I put my thumbs on, I'm pulling the teeth into occlusion. I'm pulling the mandible toward my stomach, toward the top of her head, so that the teeth are in maximum intercuspation. That is not necessarily centric relation occlusion. The teeth are in centric occlusion, but the condyle is not seated if they have a slide. Now I'm gonna place my thumbs on the chin with the fingernails very close together, so remember, the fingertips and the fingers represent the master muscles, the medial, te medial pterygoid and the temporalis, and the thumbs represent the digastric muscles. Now I'm not opening her mouth, see I'm very lightly opening the lips just a little bit so I can see the teeth, but I'm just positioning my hands. I'm not 
pushing down. I'm just holding it right there with the arced motion, arcing up, seating the condyle in the fossa, although it's not necessarily in the fossa right now. Then I'm going to ask the patient to open. Now you can see she's only opened about five to seven millimeters. I haven't pushed her mouth open. I've just asked her to open, but as she's opening, I'm arcing the condyle into maximum seating in the fossa. Because her teeth are together, the condyle is very close to being seated maximally in the fossa. When she opens and I'm putting that pressure arcing up into the condyle into the fossa, the condyle is going to slip right into centric relation. At that point the mandible will rotate and you can hinge the mandible. See how she's hinging right there. Now don't hinge like this or you'll make her splint. Just light, light hinge and that confirms you're in centric relation. Light hinging and then say close lightly. Let her supply until you make first contact. Then squeeze. See, she's got about a one and a half millimeter centric relation to centric occlusion slide. What that means is when I have the, the condyle seated in the fossa maximally with firm upward arcing pressure and lightly touch the teeth together, she makes contact with a tooth. Then when she squeezes and slides the teeth into maximum intercuspation, centric occlusion, there's a slide. Let's watch this again. See, she's hinging right there. I'm putting good pressure in this direction with my arms at my side, my arms locked, and I'm just moving my shoulders. I'm not moving my wrists. They're locked, and I can hinge. Then I'm having her close and see the slide? A hinging first tooth contact right there with the condyle seated, and then when I say squeeze, see it slide about a millimeter and a half. So she has about a millimeter and a half centric relation to centric occlusion slide. Is that significant? People sometimes say, why does everybody with a slide not have either myofascial muscle pain or an intraarticular slash TMJ problem? Pops, clicks, locks. She may not grind her teeth. It's like someone with a leg shorter than the other. If they never jog on that leg, say they sit in a chair all day long, go to their car, drive home, eat dinner, go to bed, they're not putting any stress on an imbalanced system. The same thing with a person that has a malocclusion. If they're not clenching the teeth or bruxing at night, they're not putting any stress on an imbalanced system, so they may not have a muscle problem, myofascial pain, or an intraarticular TMJ problem. So see how my arms are touching my side, my wrists are up, I'm forming a C, the fingertips are on the inferior border of the mandible, the thumbs are almost touching. And then that lets you push down a little bit on the lip so you can see the teeth. See, so I'm asking her to open. I'm not pushing her, I'm pulling the fingertips up, pulling up on the inferior border of the mandible to get the teeth in maximum occlusion before I place the thumbs. So this is not centric relation, this is centric occlusion. The starting point is centric occlusion. Then I raise my wrist, my arms are still in tight to my sides, raise my wrist and place my thumb so that this makes a C between the thumb and the finger. Ask her to open and as she opens, I'm cocking the mandible up this way into the condyle into the seating maximally in the fossa. See, I can hinge. Remember, you can only hinge when the condyle is seated maximally in the fossa. That will let it rotate. If it's down the eminence, it won't hinge. It'll, the muscles will splint. This relaxes the muscles. When the condyle is seated in the fossa, that's called bone bracing, and that lets the muscles relax. If I tried to open her wide, the muscles would splint just barely hinging at no more than 10 millimeters, and that confirms your in centric relation. See this, the mandible just completely relaxes, it's out of the patient's control. Then you touch and squeeze, and you can document the amount of CRCO slide. So chin up, sitting on the back of the head, pull the teeth into a occlusion, put, place the thumbs, don't push down, ask her to open, and when she opens, that condyle is going to slide right into the fossa, and you've got your in centric relation. Don't let it shock you. You'll do it correctly the first time. And then you can hinge just a little bit, but don't let them open more than 10 millimeters or they'll be translating and it probably won't hinge. Hinging, first contact, first tooth contact right there. Then about a one and a half to two millimeter slide. So chin up. I want you to watch this several times. Place the fingers on the inferior board of the mandible, pull the teeth together, place the thumbs, ask the patient to open, hinge at about 10 millimeters of opening to confirm your in-centric relation. 
Ask her to close gently. Identify first tooth contact in centric relation. Have her squeeze and that identifies the centric relation to centric occlusion slide. So hinging again, first tooth contact right there, squeeze, CRCO slide of about two millimeters. If you're equilibrating someone, you'll eliminate that slide either by adjusting the contact so that the other teeth contact and there is no slide, or you can actually add composite to the tooth. We'll go through that when we talk about occlusal equilibration. So that's the dental minute.